everyone, ¿cómo están? How are you doing today, Mayday Familia? Uh, glad to be joining with another video today. And today I want to talk a little bit more about a topic that has been coming up more for me recently and I've been looking into a lot more. I'm not going to lie, when I find things I'm interested in, I get low-key obsessed. I, when I say obsessed, I mean like every second of every day I'm looking for more information on whatever that particular thing is or person. <laughs> so um, one of the things that has come back up for me, of course, because it comes up, you know, here randomly, especially being in the profession that I'm in, is uh, the personality types. Now, my personality type is a little bit more on the rarer side, right? So as an IN, uh, as an INFJ, I fall into that category of one to two percentile of the population. I'm not going to dive too deep into that because it's not, it's very small. It's a very small chunk, but it's, you know, we could, there could be an argument for how much of the population, right? It, surely it's not necessarily like the whole world or the entire United States. So how much of the population are we talking about? But regardless, it's a fairly large number and a fairly small percentage in comparison, especially when we compare it to um, other types. So as an INFJ, we're nicknamed the counselor, which is so funny being that I am a counselor, right? And that was my chosen profession. Now, when I chose the profession, I didn't know anything about this, right? It, it just so happened. Like I was one of those people that knew what I wanted to do from a very early age, young age. And I didn't just know what I wanted to do. I knew what I wanted to do undisputedly, like um, undisputedly. Like I, I was not shaken or confused. I knew... I, I might have not known exactly precisely, but like, for example, I, I knew I wanted to be in psychology. I knew my interest was to learn more about people, human behavior. I, you know, and it, so as I developed what I knew innately, um, I ended up here where I am now. So, and it's a, it's quite a perfect fit. I, I, I love what I do. So uh, with that being said, I've been looking, you know, more and more into the INFJ personality type. And, you know, it's such a rare personality type that often gets misunderstood. And, you know, I just got inspired to make a video on something that I see come up and I've seen come up time and time again, which is this concept of shutting the door, right? So uh, for those of you that might not know, shutting the door for an INFJ ends up happening when an INFJ has had enough and they essentially just shut someone out of their life. They, they stop responding. They stop talking to them. It's almost like they never existed, at least to the other person. It's like they never existed. And this is a characteristic that a lot of people know us by. Uh, you know, they, they it's one of the characteristics that's, that, that's most widely known. A lot of people don't know a lot about us, but if they know anything, typically this is one of the things that they know is this shut the door aspect to our personality. And what I was interested the most in was why that happens, right? So why do INFJs come to a point where they literally shut the door on someone or shut the door on on people that they might meet or they might have been uh, friends with or acquaintances with. Why does that happen? And a lot of the answer that I was seeing was, you know, because they get angry, right? So INFJs have the tendency of trying a lot, giving people quite a few chances. Um, but it's it, it, a little bit is because they want that person to be better. But most of the time, if you think about it, the source of that, giving people multiple chances, the source of that, the reason why INFJs likely do that is because they're so scared to let go. They're scared to, um, you know, 
not have that relationship and um, have that person walk out on them, right? So all of it kind of stems from this fear uh, of, uh, you know, potentially being honest with themselves, this fear of, um, you know, letting go of a relationship that's actually not working for them. So they'll give multiple chances. And I, I say they because I had a really, really bad habit of doing this as well. So it's something that I've had to work very, very hard at and I continue to work on. Um, but they'll give too many chances. And so what ends up happening is other people get used to that. They think it's the norm. They end up not really even seeing a reason to change. And it just kind of becomes ingrained in the relationship pattern for the other person. Well, unfortunately for the INFJ, that's not what's happening. The INFJ is constantly in, a more, in, in an emotional turmoil within this relationship that keeps getting worse every time that they try. So while for the other person, it's becoming more and more the norm, how they operate, this is how it is, for an INFJ, it's getting worse, right? It's becoming more of an emotional turmoil. It's becoming harder. It's becoming more hard work. And most importantly, they're running out of excuses for continuing to try. Because remember, INFJs are very logical people, logical thinkers, right? So, you know, when they keep trying and nothing is happening and nothing is changing, they're essentially running out of reasons for why they should keep trying, Right. So it's just by that alone getting worse and worse. So what ends up happening here is um, at a point, the IMJ explodes. Right. And one of two things can happen when that happens. Right. So either the INFJ just stops and cuts off all communication and just leaves or B, the INFJ explodes literally when it comes to emotionally and is really direct and becomes a really scary person that you never knew this person could be. Um, and they tell you all about yourself and it, sh it sinks the relationship anyway. So both usually end up in the same place with the relationship being broken and so broken where it's never gonna be pieced back together. So you have the INFJs that will literally just leave and not say anything. And you have those that will literally explode, right? And tell you what they really think and tell you, okay, I've noticed that you've been doing these things. And it takes the other person in shock because keep in mind, this, is, this, has, been, this has been becoming the norm for the other person. So they're not thinking that you're noticing all this bad behavior. Meanwhile, you are. And so they are like in a state of shock and they don't really usually don't know what to do with that. And usually it's too much for them to process because there's a lot there that's going on within themselves that they're not, that they're not able to see for themselves. Right. And here comes someone just pointing it out in front of them. So that, you know, either one of those lead to the same place. Now I hear a lot of people say, Oh, it's because of the anger. They get so angry and they've had enough that they, the INFJ gets so angry and they've had enough that they end up just leaving. Well, I will contest that. I think what's really actually going on for the INFJ is not that they get angry. It's the emotion behind the anger. So what is the emotion behind the anger? The emotion behind the anger is pain. What happens is you... One of the core characteristics for INFJs is usually they've been through so much pain that they isolate themselves. And it's a, almost like a protective mechanism. It becomes one of the core aspects to that is it becomes a protective mechanism in order to protect themselves from what? Well, from being hurt by people, from being misunderstood. Because what happens when you're misunderstood? Well, that hurts, it's painful, right? So what happens there is the outburst, the behavioral response is anger, but what's actually happening behind the surface is there's too much pain. And the pain has been increasing and compiling over time. Usually it's been compiling over time so much so that the INFJ gets to a point where they're not able to process through so much pain. So they shut down, they shut out, they will shut you out. And this, this is me, this, this is, 
I'm describing myself as well. And I've had to work very, very hard at trying to maybe find healthier coping skills, but they'll end up shutting you out of their life because the pain that you've caused them continues to grow. And it's so much that they are literally not able to process through so much pain. And so I think that's the point of focus. And I thought it was important enough to make a video about because if we keep focusing so much on the anger piece, then INFJs are less likely to focus on what the true issue is, which is the pain that's being caused and the fact that they're not able to process through this pain. And you have to be able to be aware of that in order to be able to find maybe better coping skills for that, right? To processing through that pain. So, um, you know, they might end up uh, telling you about yourself, <laughs> everything that you do wrong, everything that they've noticed, things that you never knew that they were noticing, but they were putting themselves at the back burner just to make you feel comfortable because they know that that's a shortcoming that you have, right? And what ends up happening when they keep trying to make it a better relationship for themselves and it's not working because you're not picking up on it or the other person isn't changing is they explode. And a lot of times it comes out in a form of, in the form of anger for an INFJ, um, uh, which could look like them just shutting you out completely, or literally they tell you what you thought they didn't know. They tell you about yourself, right? And it the whole relationship collapses from there. Well, it's not that we get angry, at least for me, it's not that I get angry. That's not the primary emotion. I display it, it comes out in the form of anger sometimes and frustration, but what's really happening in there for me is that I'm in so much pain by this lack of being understood, by you not being able to understand what I'm saying, even though I keep pouring into it, even though I keep investing in it, there's so much pain by you not understanding the magnitude of what you did to me, especially for people that will keep telling me, just get over it. Or don't bring this up to me anymore. I don't want to talk about it anymore. So don't bring it up. That drives me crazy. That just happened to me not so long ago. I, I did cut that person off instantly. I could not process through that amount of pain, especially the pain of knowing that you can't understand how much pain you've caused me. Like that turmoil that you've put me in, that you've caused me, right? And now on top of that, you're trying to tell me how, to, how I should deal with it, right? So double meaning. So I think that's why it's important to know where it's coming from, to not just dismiss it as anger. Um, oh, I just got angry and I left, I couldn't deal. But to really, really truly understand the core feeling there, which is the pain itself. So it's so, so important for us to know what's actually happening with us and with our emotions in that very moment, right? Because... So what I also hear a lot of us say, a lot of INFJs will say things like, once that door is closed, there's no going back. Uh, or they'll say, it's incredibly difficult to go back. Now, I can agree with the it's incredibly difficult piece, right? But I hear a lot of um, INFJs say, it's impossible to go back once the door is closed. Well, why is that? I wonder if, that has been thought of, right? So have we ever asked us, ourselves the question of why is it impossible for us to go back? And a good chunk of that is because there's so much pain that was caused that was never actually processed through, that was never addressed, right? And so the difficulty lies in not the fact that it's impossible, but the fact that it added up to the extent to where there's so much that we have to be processed through. It almost seems insurmountable, right? Like un unreachable. And in order to do that, the amount of work it would be from the INFJ, I mean, it would just be a lot of work from the INFJ's part. And then also, the other person would really be trying to work with miracles at this point, right? Because once the door is shut from an INFJ, it goes with a lot of other things, the trust and 
all of these aspects that usually take a long time to build with an INFJ go with it. And so you're starting over, but you're not starting over from where you started. You're essentially starting over from like 20 steps behind where you started. And so for the other person, it would be an incredible amount of work. For the INFJ, it would be a lot of work because then they would have to actually address and, and process through these emotions, these painful emotions that you put them through. So um, I think it's important to know that. I mean, that there is a way to save the relationship, but it's just is it worth it at that point, right? Or is it just not? And a lot of INFJs will say no, because a lot of times we associate that with the person's core character. And now we have an even deeper problem. So it goes beyond just something that happened in the relationship itself. And it becomes something that's fundamentally broken in, these, in this other person that, that can't be fixed from our perspective, right? It's like a character flaw that's so big that it just won't work, right? And so you're, you know, there's a lot there to unpack if you're wanting to kind of fix the issue, uh, which is why that closing of the door tends to be final in most cases. Now I have found in very, very rare cases for me, from my experience, I think it's like one person that this has happened with where I had that, I've had several of those like moments where I just kind of like, I shut down, I can't do it anymore. And I, and I, um, the behavioral response for me is frustration and anger. And I tell them about themselves and I retract and the person comes back. Well, one of the things that INFJs will hate and tend to hate is when the person comes back and tries to act like nothing happened. It's very, very disturbing to an INFJ because it's it just feels like there's this lack of awareness, sweeping under the rug type of thing, right? Um, you know, but just through working on it, I found that I can still bring it back up if the person does reach out again and I'm at a point where I've processed through the pain. Now, if you haven't processed through the pain, if the person reaches out again, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to want to deal with that at all, right? Um, or if you've blocked the person because there was so much pain that you weren't you're able to process through all at once, then it shuts out that relationship completely. And in a lot of cases, it's more appropriate, right? It's more appropriate to do that. But not in all cases, not necessarily, right? Because INFJs um, can be very stern in our beliefs and our values. And that's a good thing. But a lot of times we might take that to extremes where our expectations are just not realistic for the regular person or the regular human being. So, um, you know, really, really taking time to process through the pain and what happened is really, really important. And what I would suggest before actually just blocking someone out. But in a lot of cases, it is appropriate, I think, anyway. So if I have enough time to process through the pain and the person coming back and the person comes back after I've had enough time processing through the pain, a lot of times I'll state what I need to happen, the changes that I need to see for us to continue to be friends. And I'll be able to give it another shot from there, even though I had initially closed that door, like completely, like I'm not reaching out to you. I'm not talking to you. I'm good. Uh, so it just really depends, but I've had to work really, really hard on that. And I've been fortunate enough where I'm, I've had a friend that has done that repeatedly where it doesn't matter what I say, they come back every time. It's a little weird, but like it allows me to practice, um, you know, being more realistic when it comes to my expectations from other people and being better at setting more appropriate boundaries but based on more realistic expect expectations so that I'm both protecting myself, protecting my environment and my mental health, but also not necessarily having to isolate myself at the same level or to the same degree, if that makes sense. So that way you have a way 
of processing through that pain. Okay. So we'll leave it at that for today. There's so much more to be said on this issue, right? Because other questions now will come up. How do I process through the pain? What do I do? You know, um, how do I recognize when that's happening? So many. So I do plan on continuing to make videos about this, but I think that's a good starting point for INFJs. What we need to do for ourselves is start learning how we can, A, prevent this from happening or getting to this point in the first place or be more effective at trying to prevent it because a lot of times you just can't prevent it. Um, and B, how do we process through it in the, the most efficient way possible, maybe in more efficient ways when it does happen? Um, so I'll make other videos kind of ta tackling those subjects, but wanted to start out with this video. Let me know your thoughts. What comes up for you? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to kind of hearing more about your thoughts, what you think, and if there's any other topics that you want me to cover, go ahead and leave that comment below as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube algorithm as well, and uh, also like this video if it was at all helpful to you for the YouTube algorithm as well. <laughs> all right, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.